Hi, I'll read paragraph 8 of the chapter on ornaments in general. Inbox Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen. Diesem ungeachtet steht es jedem, wer die Geschicklichkeit besitzt, frei, außer unseren Manieren weit läuftiger einzumischen. Nur brauche man hierbei die Vorsicht, dass dieses selten an dem rechten Orte und ohne dem Effekte des Stückes Gewalt zu tun, geschehe. Man wird von selbsten begreifen, dass, zum Exempel, die Vorstellung der Unschuld oder Traurigkeit weniger Auszierungen leidet als andere Leidenschaften. Wer hierin in das Nötige in Abakt nimmt, den kann man für vollkommen passieren lassen, weil er mit der singenden Art sein Instrument zu spielen, das Überraschende und Feurige, welches die Instrumente vor der Singestimme voraus haben, auf eine geschickte Art verknüpft und folglich die Aufmerksamkeit seiner Zuhörer durch eine beständige Veränderung vorzüglich aufzumuntern und zu unterhalten weiß. In diesem Punkte behalte man ohne Bedenken den Unterscheid zwischen der Singestimme und dem Instrumente bei. Wer nur sonst die nötige Behutsamkeit wegen dieser Manieren anwendet, der sei übrigens unbekümmert, ob das, was er spielet, eben gesungen werden könne oder nicht. Now this paragraph, I think, is a, in my opinion, is a good example of how Bach doesn't spoon feed. And he's saying a lot in this paragraph, but he doesn't say it explicitly. He, he hints at it. So he's talking about the more extensive ornaments. And in the last paragraph, which I translated in the, in the first part of the videos on ornaments in general, you know, he talks about why he, he's not covering these more extensive ornaments. And so in this paragraph, he's saying, you know, if you have the skill, you're free to add them, but be careful because they're rarely added in the right place and they're rarely added in a way that they don't harm or, or ruin the effect of the piece. And then he's basically saying where one can add these ornaments, but he doesn't say it directly. He, he doesn't say add them here or here and don't add them here. He, he says, you know, he basically tells us what he considers a, a complete player to be or an accomplished player or a, you know, like a, a consummate artist, he is telling us what his, you know, when he thinks of an accomplished player, he imagines something and he is sh sh telling us here in this paragraph what he's imagining. And so he says the accomplished player is able to you know, knows, is able to use the singing way to play the instrument. And he is as well able to play, you know, he's able to use the surprising and fiery. So the, and, and, and it's an advantage in the instrument has also over the singing voice. So it's like a instrumental way to play the instrument plus a singing way to play the instrument. And so the accomplished player knows is able to use both of them and he's able to alternate between the two so between the singing way to play the instrument and the instrumental way to play the instrument and you know sustain the attention and the interest of their listeners and he says as well that you know he gives an example like of of 
you know, when it's um, innocent or, or sad, that that'll, you know, the presentation of such emotions suffer less ornamentation than other passions. And he says, you know, who, whoever takes what's necessary herein or heeds what's the necessary herein. So that means it's, it's not just, he's not talking about the one example that he provides, but he's talking about the whole range of music that, um, you know, that you're aware of all the music. That, that you know when the accomplished player knows when to do the singing way of playing the instrument with the instrumental way. So he is basically telling us that the, those more extensive ornaments, that they are used in those places where the instrumental, the surprising and fiery comes into effect and not the singing way to play the instrument. So he, 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 he tells us when to use the more extensive ornaments in that he tells us what, his, what is an, an accomplished player or a consummate artist or a complete musician or yeah, pianist is in order to tell us where to use these ornaments, where they can be used without doing damage to the piece. So, you know, you, you're not using them when you're using the singing way to play the instrument. And I would say that um, that piece in D major, the Largo Maestoso, that that is a good example of what he's talking about. And in that piece, Bach presents he, he constantly alternates between those two ways of playing in the music or he provides a vehicle in which the interpreter or the performer can alternate between the surprising and the fiery and that way of playing that the instrument has over the singing voice and the singing way to play the piano. And I would say that this piece he might have had in mind when he was writing that paragraph, considering the fact that it wasn't so long ago, that it was at the end of the chapter on fingering, the previous chapter, that he mentioned this piece. And it could be that it's still in his mind while he's writing this paragraph. And so I'm going, I'll add it to the end screen, my interpretation of that. So you could look at that with that in mind um, and maybe you'll notice me switching between the surprising and fiery or a in more instrumental way of playing the instrument and a more singing way and in that piece there is, are examples of innocence and I'd say sadness but definitely innocence is there in that piece and you can hear if you can spot that moment like where there's the innocence is being presented you can see how there is no ornamentation and how little that would suffer ornamentation so a lot of what Bach is talking about in this paragraph can be you know seen or heard in that piece I would say plus I would say I'm the only person who's connecting that paragraph with that piece but that might be um, something you might be interested in taking a look at just to see what um, it is Bach is talking about because something el else there's two more things I think I want to say about that paragraph and one of them is that last sentence the, when he says, um, Wer nur sonst die nötige, das nötigste in, um, what was this? Wer nur sonst die nötige Behutsamkeit wegen dieser Manieren anwendet, 
der sei übrigens unbekümmert, ob das, was er spielet, eben gesungen werden könne oder nicht. That translating this, this took me a, a while, a lot of thinking about in terms of what, what is Bach saying? Because if, you know, take the, what, what I would you know, consider the, the obvious translation and, and it's just it being like he is, whoever um, applies the, the necessary care or caution in regarding these ornaments, they are unconcerned if that's what they can play, can be sung or not. And I would say that translation contradicts the paragraph because Bach is talking about the complete player and how they know to, they know the difference between playing the instrument in a singing way and in the instrumental way he's, t he's talking about. And that it, it, it would be contradicting that that person then wouldn't care if that's what he sings can be sung or not. And I would as well connect this paragraph to that first paragraph in the chapter on performance. And I re read out that paragraph and translate it in the video with episode six, the golden sound. And at the beginning of that video, I, I read that paragraph and he's talking about two types of players. He's talking about the, you know, fast players from profession who, and the treffers as he calls them, the hitters who, who hit the right notes and play fast. And then he talks about the others who under the pretense of the singing quality of the instrument, they, they, they bore people to tears. They, everything is, you know, the, the allegros are too fast. The adagios are too slow. No, the adagios are too slow and the allegros, no, the adagios are too fast and the allegros are too slow. Um, that, you know, that, that, that is connected here because there he talks about the two, he talks about two types of players, the flip sides of the same coin, who aren't, he does not consider complete artists. And what characterizes both of them is that they're only playing notes. They, they don't play, they don't play music. They only know how to play notes. And the, they, they're, they're choosing different, you know, did those people who hide behind or who under the pretense of the instrument being the singing quality of the instrument, they think everything should be sung. You know, if you hear them talk about Mozart, they say it's, it's all opera or it should all be sung. They don't differentiate between those places where you're using a singing way to play the instrument and the surprising and fiery. Whereas the, the other, the treffers, the ones who hit all the right notes and who play fast, they as well don't distinguish between the two types, the two ways of playing. They don't combine those two ways of playing like the accomplished player does. And they're as well just playing notes. They're as well just playing notes. And so it wouldn't make sense that the ones who do follow what's or take heed of what's of, of the proper care regarding these ornaments that they wouldn't be concerned with if what they can, what they play can be sung or not because those two other types of players he describes in the other paragraph, neither of them is concerned if, if, if that's what they can play can be sung or not.
because they only deal in notes. They don't deal in music. So that would seem like a contradiction. And then I was thinking that um, maybe sans here is used in the sense of besides. And, and I was wondering if, there, if, if it could be possibly a sentence where he's saying everybody who uses basically, who only uses everything bar the necessary caution. So those two players, um, that Buck describes in, in, in that paragraph, the treffers and the people who hide behind, you know, the singing quality, who, who under the pretense of the singing quality instrument, just bore people to tears, that neither of them are concerned um, with this singing way to play the instrument and then the surprising and fiery because the one it, it's just it's all notes with the one they think they never sing anything the, the fast players and the people who hit the right notes and the others thinking everything should be sung is the same as thinking nothing should be sung It's they're flip sides sides of the same coin. So that would fit then. It doesn't contradict because the accomplished player knows to that they know to retain those two qualities. The, the one the singing way to play the instrument plus the way it has over the singing voice to preserve those two qualities and, and, and alternate and combine them in order to take the listener there where they want, you know, take the listener somewhere. So in, in that sense, that translation would make sense, but it's with the, with the German, it doesn't really, it's not one I could settle on. And then I thought, you know, and then I was thinking, considering Sonst in the term, in terms of, you know, meaning usually or as a rule. So, and then I thought when what makes sense in that last sentence is when you consider it, not what Bach is saying that who, who usually as a rule, um, applies the necessary cautiousness regarding these ornaments, they are unconcerned if that what they can play can be sung or not. That Bach is actually, he's not talking about what they play, meaning the whole piece, but what he, in terms of what they play when they are playing these extended ornaments, that in when they're playing the extended ornaments, they're not concerned if that's what they play can be sung or not. Because basically Bach has been saying in the paragraph, you, you keep these extended ornaments, the elaborate ornaments for those places where the surprising and fiery comes into effect, where you're not playing in a singing way. You're not using the singing way to play the instrument. And so in that sense, when it's not the entire piece, but restricted to these the these ornaments that um you know that makes sense because when he's choosing it in those moments where the surprising and fiery where the instrumental way to play the instrument is called for the ornament they introduce those notes they introduce don't have to be sung and so they're not ruining the effect of the piece. So, and Bach is not saying they can't be sung, like you could introduce a more extended ornament that can be sung, but there, it doesn't have to be sung because they have chosen the proper place for those ornaments and they have cho and they're using them in a way that doesn't ruin the effect of the piece. So if you've located in that piece that like presentation of innocence 
if you can spot that you might see understand that if if you know a a a, a bigger ornament would ruin that effect and that the, the, that innocence the, the, where where it it takes the time to say what it's saying and it doesn't it it doesn't overload you with extra it's innocent in that it just says what it needs to say and and it's unaware of the time it takes to say it it's unaware of what happened before what happened afterwards it's unaware that it might be you know holding everything up in order to say what it's saying it doesn't it's it's like a kid not aware of the the throngs behind them or around them pushing them forward and they they are just innocently saying or doing what they have to do and and the the extended ornament would ruin that and as well in this piece you can see at the end in the cadenza part that he has those extended ornaments that he's talking about he includes them there and that they're not all necessarily you can't you know sing them all they can't be sung some of them are just fast notes and played in a way that the, you can play them on the instrument that you couldn't ever sing them and that you're not concerned if you can sing them or not and I think in this piece as well Bach helps in a way he's with his dynamic with the dynamic markings he's added with those fortes and pianos and and they you might think you know like I said I don't think anybody is going to connect that piece to this paragraph that I'm the only one but that forte and piano is Bach indicating this separating the fire, fiery and surprising from the singing way to play the instrument and how this piece is a constant alternation between the two that it's there in the cadenza as well yeah and i just want to say if i have you know in the in the title i don't know what i'd have in it but let's say i do say about box describing what the complete player is and you might think when i after me reading this paragraph that that's clickbait you know because it's not you know it's it's too vague or it's not really and a description and that i'm just trying to you know yeah create a false sense of you know trying to pretend there's something there that's not there i i want to say about about when you when you read those words and for later in terms of discovering the secrets that the this book has to offer that these words are their directions they're not instructions and i'll just say an, an analogy to explain i mean it's hard to bring across what i i want to say so i'll just kind of say it and hope it comes true when i'm finished talking <laughs> but if you asked for if you ask for directions i mean how can wait just beforehand how can people some people read those words and and discover actually discover what bach is talking about and others will read those words and see nothing in them and and they'll they'll go away and they'll say yeah he didn't really say anything specific he talked and all but there was nothing really there it's because these are instructions or not instructions they're directions and it's like if you ask um somebody where some 
something is a building and if they say you know you go straight down the road you take a left and then you take another left and you go five minutes down the road and and there it, it'll be there and you won't be able to miss it it'll be a big red building well when you hear those words a big red building that is a description and that person who's telling you who who knows where that place is you're looking for that person will have in his mind those words will be connected to the image of that big red building and for you they'll when you hear them the directions they're only words and when you and you obviously you'll recognize them as directions and you'll follow the directions and so you will go and you'll find that place and you'll get to in front of that building and then all of a sudden you'll see that building and the the words the big red building will have all of a sudden they'll have an image you'll have seen what it is the person was talking about and you will know what that big red building is whereas before they're only words you don't know and the same goes for what Bach is saying when he describes the comp accomplished player because when you think about it is that not a question that you will be asking yourself as a student as what is the accomplished player you know and you might question you know is you know you might wonder is it not making a note mistake is it playing fast is it getting the rhythms right what makes an accomplished player when do i know that i've you know reached that goal so it's a it's a big it's an important question and, and it's one that at times it can really, it could really leave you stumped as to, an, to the answer. Because you'll, you'll know that, you know, that getting the notes right, not making a wrong note does not, you know, it doesn't cover everything. It's only a, 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 a part of the complete picture so it can you can you can be left stumped wondering you know well what is it what am i actually striving for so the thing is your goal when you hear these words these words are your goal is to find that what bach is talking about And anybody who, you know, and, and it's, it's about playing music as opposed to playing notes. This is what Bach is talking about. He's, the accomplished player are those who play music as opposed to notes. So you have to, the only way you are going to understand what Bach is talking about is to find that place where that Bach is describing and it's when you encounter that place Bach is describing you will recognize it and you'll say oh that's it this is this is the place where Bach is talking and the only way to do that is to start playing music and stop playing notes and what I have shared with finger position and, and all those elements of virtuosity and with the AC fingering that is a way is essentially to that is your way to begin to play notes and and that is leaving the cage because the, everybody in the cage only plays notes and that's all they ever know is playing notes and you will know you'll recognize this in 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 lessons when it's said will first you learn the notes and then we'll add the expression anybody who says that to you anybody who 
does it that way has never played music they only know notes so in order to find what it is Bach is describing he's describing it so when you stumble across it you recognize it and you know to stop there and go oh this is it this is what Bach was talking about this is something to pay attention to you have to actually be wandering you have to leave the cage and you have to be exploring the world of virtuosity in order to have passed these locations and, and when you start playing music as opposed to notes and you don't have to have it structured in a way that Bach or Mozart or Beethoven have it structured or you don't have to know the landmarks you can roam freely through that world and you might have passed by the things Bach, Mozart and Beethoven talk about and, and not have known to stop you know but you might think yes I was there I'll go back there and I'll I'll see that but that's but you need to leave the cage you need to be exploring and I would say that Beethoven's dynamics work the same way as as these words and th this is how they're getting they can be gotten wrong that when you're in the cage you're looking for instructions all the time that's all you ever want is instructions you know you you want to be told what to do directions mean nothing and so you're going to interpret when you see dynamic markings in in a beethoven piece when you're in the cage you'll see them as instructions you'll understand them as beethoven wanted this here but that's not what they are Beethoven Mozart anybody uh, all these great composers it, it varies depending on on the insight and the skill of the composer but what they are doing is they're recording music in their scores they they are recording music so a, a conversation I could have with me with Beethoven regarding his his dynamics I could say to I could say oh hi Beethoven you know you know bar 54 you were talking about I found it and Beethoven will go oh did you right and um, was there a forzando there and, and uh, was it fortissimo and did it have the staccatos and then I say yeah it did it, it was fortissimo and it had that forzando and then there was the staccato notes too and then he'll say very good yeah that's it that's bar you found it well done and I say yeah thanks it was, it was, it's a great bar and he'll say yeah it is great because that is the music of that bar that is not Beethoven's choice Beethoven is describing what you will find when you lo you find that location that Bach or that Beethoven is describing because the notes are one thing but the music is something different the notes make the music but the music is 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 a combination of notes of of the the space they take up they're like the the, the it's when you don't see the notes anymore and you're looking at the kind of the three-dimensional manifestation of these notes that is the music and, and, and the combination, the position of the notes can create certain effects, a certain phenomenon that um, has nothing to do with the personal tastes of the composer, but has everything to do with nature. And so Beethoven will be describing what happens with the music. If you don't ever play music, if you're only ever playing notes, and you never leave the cage you are never going to find those locations that the great composers are describing and 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 for someone in the cage to use that analogy of the asking for directions if they ask for directions 
and they never leave the cage. They'll ask that person, so where is this place? And that person will say, you go straight, you take a left, you take another left, and then it'll be a, this big red building. And if you're in the cage, and, and your cage is made up of notes, if you hear those directions, and you turn around, and you paint your cage red, you can see how that is not the same as, as going out into the world and finding the location. Painting your cage red does not, isn't, it does not mean you have found that big red building you're looking for. It just means you've painted your cage so it looks big and red. And that is what people are doing in the cage who only play notes. They paint those notes and, and big and red or blue or they, they make the notes look like the description of what it is they should be looking for, leaving the cage in order to find. And they might be very good at painting their notes and you know, you'll get people in the cage who are successful and accomplished and they're very good at painting their cage red or blue or whatever way they're interpreting directions as being instructions. And you might think, yeah, that's the, that's, those notes are definitely blue or th those notes are definitely red, but it's not, they're in the cage, they're playing notes and they, they, they have not found they, they never know to leave and find the locations. And that's the challenge with these words why there's, the, you know, Bach is, is really giving you a glimpse. You can actually, if you leave the cage, if you try what I've been sharing and you start playing music and stop playing notes, you have a chance of, lo of finding these locations that Bach is talking about and you have a chance of not only just understanding those words that Bach is saying but having the same mental image, the same understanding, having seen the place Bach is talking about, you can actually be thinking exactly what Bach is thinking as he writes those words. And you know Bach provides the 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 fortes and pianos in that piece and they could be nobody else sees it as this but I see it as Bach is helping us discover those the singing way the places where you use the singing way to play the instrument and the surprising and fiery but nobody else that even that that it's nobody else will see it that way. That they'll, they'll play those notes, they'll think they paint the notes loud and then they paint the notes quiet when it's F and P. They don't, they don't discover those locations that um, Bach is describing. And so, So there's a chance in that paragraph when you have left your cage, when you start playing music and when you, in your exploration of the world, you find these places, you will be able to discover for yourself, experience for yourself what it is Bach is talking about and you will notice that you have discovered the singing way to play the instrument and the instrumental way to play the instrument and you'll know that those two things exist and you'll be using both because you've found the locations. Hmm. So that was I don't know um, how that comes across. 
if it makes sense. Just want to say as well that you know um, what I've shared. It it can seem like not a lot, and very simple. Um, but I would say that if if you're given a key that um, unlocks the cage and opens up the door to a, an entire world, do you judge the, the size? of that world opened up to you by the size of the key and a very small key can unlock the door to the to the biggest area and just because it's it's over like I've already done those videos and, and I've already finished in a way sharing the key to escape the cage does not mean that what is to be discovered once you've tried those videos is anyway small and um, and that's the thing it the key to get you out of the cage is small whereas when you're looking for when you have that cage mentality you're looking for in the cage you're talking about years you want you want a two-year program, you want a five-year program. You want to be told, you want to have your, your days and weeks mapped out for you where there's a regime to follow. You know, 10 minutes of finger exercises, 40 minutes of playing with the metronome with the right hand and then another 40 minutes with the left hand and counting out loud, putting them together, doing all these cage activities. And the more you have of that, the, 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 the greater it is. And, and if you get a small key, you might dismiss it as nothing. What's this? This is tiny. There's nothing here for me. What does he want me to do? Just have the fingers straight in black keys and fingers curved in white keys and, you know, use a certain fingering. That's nothing. Where's, where's, the, where's the regime? Where's the routine? It's, it's, it's a tiny little scrap he's, he's offered. This is, this is bullshit. That key opens up the world. And, and you will see here that Bach is actually describing the accomplished player. You get to learn here from in these words what Bach means when he's talking about the accomplished player the goal that we all are pursuing because it's the accomplished player is the one who gets joy from his playing those treffers the the people who who um you know hide behind the or the, the pretense of the singing quality of the instrument they get no joy. They're as bored by their playing of the notes as, as you are. Because if no matter how great they are at painting the cage red, you're still looking at the cage when you look at those notes. You have not found that new location. Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, they're taking you through the world of music and, and each location is one you've never seen before and you get to see all these different locations whereas if you paint your cage red you're you're forever till the day you die you're in the one spot you're looking at the same notes only they're painted red sometimes or they're painted blue but they're always the same you're never tran you're never transporting your listeners or yourself to a new location where you go, wow, this is nice. I, I've never seen this before. Or, you know, it's not you you're looking at. You're looking at the location. You're going there. And, and, and you don't have to look. When you're just playing notes, you're looking at yourself all the time. Every single time. Every piece you play is the same. It's notes. And, and it's those same notes painted red or whatever painted loud or painted soft 
they are not a, a phenomenon that happens where it's not you you're listening to. You're listening to the same thing that Beethoven has found when he discovered that music or that Mozart has found when he has discovered that music because the music is not theirs. They find these locations and they describe them to us. They record them. They, they travel there the same we do. When, when they visit, when Bach or when Beethoven, you know, discovers his bar 54, he had never seen bar 54 before. Um, but there he was and he thought, this is a nice location. This stays and I'm going to describe it. So when every, anybody is searching, not in the cage, playing their notes, but playing music, and they search through the world of music and find that bar Beethoven is talking about, you are standing in that exact same location that Beethoven stood when he discovered that bar. And that's, that's the way to... Um, Keep, keep that in mind, get out of the cage, find those locations and then when you read those words again, it's like with the directions when you ask, the, when you hear the words big red building, when you have seen the big red building, those words then suddenly make sense. You can relate to those words the same way the person who gave you the directions related to those words. You know what they know. You're thinking what they are thinking. And when you do that, you know what Bach knows. You're thinking what Bach taught. And so, <laughs> I think it's so hard for me to um, know if I've, you know, communicated my point like this and um, so I, I'm always then um, you know unsure at the end of the video if I've left anything out or mm. and I don't I don't care I, I, I have to say that you know because that's the most important thing to say regarding that paragraph and it's it's you know and you might think that it's, it's too much or I'm going on too much but it's not my fault that Beethoven is so deep and that he's talking about things that you know only the accomplished player can no understand what it is he's talking about because it's only the the accomplished player has left the cage they have found the singing way to play the instrument they found the instrumental way to play the instrument and the only way to do that it's not how how many years do you think you'll be playing with the metronome when it'll dawn on you or, you know, when you play the instrument in a singing way and, and in the surprising and fiery, how many, you know, at what point will playing along with the metronome, playing the notes along with the metronome, will it click? Or what marking on the met at what marking on the metronome will it click? Will it be 100 or 110 or 140 or maybe 185? Maybe that's why it never clicks, because you never get, are able to push the metronome fast enough. Is there a point where it'll click, a speed on the metronome where all of a sudden, you, it's not notes you're playing anymore, but you discover the music. The only way to discover all that is to try to get out of the cage 
and start playing music and stop playing notes. I've provided the way to do that. And then search, explore the world of music making and find it for yourself. Bye.